Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. So in the last video, I talked about tank anxiety as kind of like, you know, the first step you need to overcome in, like to get into tanking. And I thought I would kind of like, you know, continue this like thread, right? Where I like talk a little bit about like the beginnings of tanking. And I think one of a really important question to ask yourself when you first want to start out is, what tank is right for you? Like what tank should you pick? Uh, because you do actually have a few options uh, to pick out and there are, you know, differences between the different tanks uh, where one might fit you more than another one. In this video, I'm not really gonna like talk too much about meta because honestly, it would be kind of like a waste of time because the meta will change. Right now, the tank meta is almost as close as it can get. They are definitely and will always be just a tank that can do it a little bit better but overall every one of them is like so like close to each other like it, it, it is first gonna be a problem if you're doing 28s or 30s right if you're just doing 20s every single tank can do a, t a 20 perfectly so you should not worry about that but there are fundamentals that I kind of like want to talk a little bit about like what is the fundamental behind the different tanks and I want to start this list off by talking about the warrior now I actually did make a video talking about what tank I would main in um, here in season three, and in there I actually said that the Warriors might be my favorite tank, but simply just because I've been playing it so much means that I just need a, more of like a break from it, and that actually still holds true. I I really hold the Warrior very very dear, and you might you know the whole thing about the Warrior is it it kind of just fits the picture that you have in your head when you're thinking about a tank, right? It's a big guy or girl with a sh big shield. That's basically it with the warrior. You have extremely, um, I think the warriors might be one of the best tanks to start with. And that's interesting because there is actually like a lot of mechanics in it that makes it more, um, it takes a bit of practice to like really master it, but it, it's like easy to, to, to learn and easy to like play pretty good. But like it, it, there is some trick to like actually mastering it. But overall, the reason why I think it's, it's a good tank to begin with, it's that it's just naturally really tangy. Like you just have a huge uh, health pool, you have a shield, so you have like pretty bro big uh, block change without using, you know, shield block or anything. Um, and you just, yeah, I have much armor and as all that. So it's, you won't really get one-shotted or like you be se severely like in danger of that at all. Um, instead, you what you have is actually like, you have pretty basic but actually really good uh, cooldown reductions um, with like you know shield wall which is like a 50% damage reduction you have last stand that you know on its own is not the biggest thing it just kind of works like it gives you 30% health and an increased health pool um, but you can actually tell it into getting uh, that buffed up really really much and actually getting it to be a really really good defensive cooldown where you have shield block the whole like duration and that's also the thing, like you have Ignore Pain, which basically just works works as an absorption shield, and then you have Shield Block that blocks all physical damage. Now, where I managed man, mentioned before, where the, you know the warrior is a little bit you know harder to master, is simply just because the use of like Spell Reflect. Uh, spell Reflect is one of the best abilities you have because it can just completely mitigate a lot of like damage output, but also just can, like you know reflect it back to the boss or the mob or whatever. But it kind of does take a little bit of like dungeon knowledge and also a little bit of game knowledge of like what can you reflect and what you can't. My tip for you if you want to go with 100, like, I mean sorry, <laughs> if you want to go with the warrior is simply just to just to use the spell effect on cooldown, see what hits and what doesn't. But overall I think if you want to like, if you're feeling for the warrior, uh, I can definitely highly recommend it. Compared to the other tanks, its utility is not well, yeah, that's the thing. The utility is not necessarily bad. You have an AoE stun. You also can tell it into a single target stun. You have AoE fear and like, you know, AoE taunt. So you do actually have a great, like, good tool. But compared to the other tanks, yeah, the warrior is kind of a little bit lagging behind. You do actually end up having, you know, a, um, a party buff, which is also really great. So overall, I think the warrior is also really, really fast and a lot of fun to just play yeah i would definitely recommend the warrior especially if you are a little more beginner because it is actually kind of forgiving 
Now, another tank I would also recommend for uh, if you're new to tanking is actually the Paladin. Now, I honestly don't really have to mention Paladin that much because <laughs> if you wanted to play a Paladin, you've already made that kind of choice, right? That's kind of like how pa Paladin mains are. They just, no matter how the, the spec is, or how bad or good it is, they, they, you will always find Paladin mains. That, that's just, they always there. The Paladin is really cool and you've probably seen it before with the Avenging Shield, you know, the, the, the Captain America throwing his shield around. Which also just serves as a really great uh, AoE silence. Uh, you have Divine Toll, which, I'm sorry, that's the one that uh, works as an AoE silence. Uh, Avenging Shield is just a single target silence, but it's still incredible. Uh, but yeah, Divine Toll, you've seen that a lot. It's so much fun just to hit that bell and see all those shields going off really flashy. The reason why I think the, um, the Paladin is really great for beginners is actually because the Paladin was the one that really got me into being become a better tank, simply just because it's it can be kind of punishing. So the way the Paladin works is, you know, you have the different um, holy power um, charge up uh, combo thing that you need to spend. And you need to like have uh, your shield of righteous up because that increases your armor as well as your block chance and all that. So it kind of like you need a little bit of ramp up and like keep it up to keep your defenses up. If you don't, you are actually in the risk of getting one shot because you do not have as big of a life pool as a health pool, sorry, as a warrior or a guardian druid. So you actually just are really forced into using your cooldowns accordingly because if not you will just get smacked and that actually is something that can be kind of intimidating um if you're first beginning but it is actually really really great because it this is what's gonna teach you how to use your cooldowns properly is just getting smacked overall like again the paladin is is a fun action packed um the tank, I uh, really highly recommend it. You also just have incredible utility. That can also be a little bit of like a intimidating for new players because you too, your action bar will just be completely filled up. Just on its own rotationally, um, it's quite simple, but you know, the more you delve into the Paladin and all its utility, such as like using sacrifice, you know, to uh, take some of the heat off your, your healer. You also just have, you know, you can heal your party, you have Lay of Hands, which of course you can save for yourself, but you can also just use it on your party members. You do actually have a lot of, like, control, um, as well as you can just almost endlessly kick every single, like, cast there is. I'm being a little bit, like, exaggerating, but you, you get the point. It, yeah, absolutely incredible utility, but it does actually require some... Uh, inside or like just you know sit down so actually like learn all the different utilities and that's where like the paladin really shines if you can really get a use out of that utility and like you know your uh, kind of like your support role in um, in this aspect and to you know opposite the paladin we do actually have the death knight and the death knight is actually a super interesting tank so instead of like mitigating the damage like the warrior and other tanks would normally do and Blood Knight's all fundamental is all about healing back the damage that you take by using your runic power on Death Strike, you know, and, and through that, like, healing it back. Now, while that is has some really great benefits, they also do have one negative that I need to really quickly talk about. And I did mention that I didn't did not want to talk too much about meta, but um, right now, the, pal the Death Knight, sorry, is the tank that is in the most trouble going really high simply just because uh, i mean high key simply just because you are in the danger of being one shot because again as i mentioned you're not really job is not really to mitigate the damage but it is to just survive it and then heal it back and if you can't really survive it then you can't really heal it back right you see the issue um so that means that the Death Knight actually has some issues going into, and when I say high keys, I mean like really high keys. You know, if you go into 20s, 21, 22, 23, you will be fine. Uh, you can still get smacked around. No, 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 don't worry about that. But you will normally be fine. Going into higher keys than that, 25, 26, 30s. Yeah, the Death Knight is going to falter. But hey, you do at least you know, get to have the legendary. So there's that. Now the benefit of having this whole, you know, for 99% of the, the rest of the time, uh, the Death Knight is really, really great to play, especially if you are a solo player, because you are in complete control of yourself and your character. Uh, that means that, like, you know, 
if everyone else dies in your party, you will definitely have these heroic moments where you just finish the boss off without, with, with ease, right? With no problem whatsoever because you, you can just heal everything back. Um, but it also means on the other side, right? That in the other way that if you die, most of the times the mistake is on you. Like the healer is not responsible for your health bar, you are. And that's actually not too scary because as I said before, control is honestly a, just a really, really great thing when you're playing as a tank. Where the Death Knight kind of do falter, in my opinion, is in its utility. It does have Death Grip, which is, you know, really useful to picking it um, um, casters and other mobs you want to like gather up. It does also have it's a stun you can tag it into and it also has engine magic um, zone. Which is great, you know, for big magic damage that goes out for your party. But besides that, the Death Knight doesn't really have that much else to offer or to do utility-wise. And then of course we can't really, you know, bounce around the fact that the Blood Death Knight is basically just the most immobile tank there is, right? You have your Death Advance, uh, I believe you can have two of them. Uh, you also have the, the, the spirit walk, but you don't really tile the talent into that. So you are kind of immobile, you don't really move that fast. And of course that means that, you know, if you don't move that fast, you don't really pull that faster compared to all the tanks. I mean, you can be a little bit slower and you need to like work around that a little bit. You need to, uh, the dungeons where you can mount up is going to be very beneficial for you. But outside of that, you will see yourself sometimes this kind of be with the party or like behind the party which can suffer like overall time. I really feel like I'm giving the Death Knight a bad rep right here because it is actually a super super fun tank to play and it's definitely something I recommend everyone to try at some point even though it might not just be your main. Uh, the Black Death Knight is something that's just incredibly fun just to pull up and just like go ham in and once in a while. Um, just because as I mentioned before, the amount of control that you have, that you just like control the, your own health bar, you just heal everything up. You really, when, when everything works, you are completely immortal. Like you cannot die. Um, but it also, you know, requires you to play pretty precisely or, you know, it, it does have like punishing points where if you're not really, if, if for example, it like requires you to be in melee all the time because you need to ch uh, generate runic power, which you do from attacking. So if you have to run out, or you have to somehow stop attacking, that's actually where you can be really, really vulnerable since you don't really have any uh, range thing. Because that is something I forgot to mention about the Paladin is the fact that almost all their abilities are ranged. So they can just like, keep going even though they are not even able to stand in melee. Death Knight, not so much, unfortunately. But I just really again want to say, Death Knight, absolutely a beast of a tank, really, really fun. It does have some weak points and it does have something that you need to be wary of. It's why I'm not really pointing it into a like, complete beginner as a tank. You can definitely still, if you, I, again, I want to like emphasize this. If you are a new person and you are stuck, sticking with a tank, you're like, oh, I really want to play the, the, the Death Knight. Don't hold, please don't hold it back. None of the tanks aren't that severely difficult that you can't just jump right into it. There are just some tanks that are a little bit more forgiving than others. Um, but Death Knight is definitely one of the most fun tanks you can play as. And then let's talk a little bit more about a more difficult tank in my opinion, which might be controversial. I don't think everyone thinks this tank is that difficult, but I think it has some nuances. And that is the Monk. The Monk is one of my favorite tanks and it's because it kind of works very... The reason why I'm saying it's more difficult because it is kind of working very different from other tanks simply because the uh, the damage mitigation is kind of passive. Um, so if you're starting off with the Monk, which I mentioned before, you can absolutely do that. Um, it's just the fact that you might get a warped perception of what other tanks, you know, have to offer. So where the Blood Death Knight, you know, heals back, the Monk's whole gimmick is simply just that it has Stagger. Now what Stagger does, it, is, it takes a percentage of uh, the damage that you take, and instead of taking that full amount of damage right there in that second, it will instead, you know, spread it out uh, over a few more, uh, 10 or 12 seconds, something like that, right? Uh, over like a pretty decent long duration, and instead like act like a dot. What that actually means is that your health bar, like uh, with the opposite of um, the Death Knight where you will spike a lot and see your health bar go down and up, down and up, the monk will honestly just stay very, very smoothly but continuously, you know, going down. 
meaning that they are much more healer reliant, which is not really a negative that you might think, because what Monk Egg does is it, it makes you extremely easy to heal. Now that is of course because of Stagger, because you know your health bar is a little bit smoothy, but also because the amount of critical chance that you have, um, you have a chance of like, you know, uh, with your critical chance to get just get an extra heal out of every single time someone heals you or you heal yourself. Meaning that the, tank, the monk is honestly, yeah, it's healer reliant, you need to be wary of that, that you can't always um, just heal yourself up. You do have expel harm and you drop some orbs by taking damage, which if you get another five of those orbs, it can basically just put you to full health. Uh, so you can actually play a little bit aggressively and I think the monk works really really well if you push yourself and playing really aggressively. And I think that's why I wanted to put the monk up to a little bit more of the, 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 the more the difficult tanks to get into or just not really the, the beginner one. Simply because like to get the monk to really shine and really be you know outgoing and, and better than the other tanks you really need to be push yourself a little bit and be aggressive because they are, the, the monk actually does allow you to do it. Outside of that, you do actually have, in my opinion, really, really great utility. It's, it's kind of basic, but it it's honestly works really well. One of the ones that works incredibly, incredibly well is Ring of Peace, which is a talent you pick and you drop down a big round circle, which bounces every single enemy like outside of that circle. And you can use that to just uh, stop them from like fixating, you know, you're making sure your, your party is safe. You can also just use it as kiting, you know, to get away or to actually interrupt. There's a lot of like tools for this, which I think is like, really great. You also have your AoE stun with like your kick, your uh, paralyze that you can like, you know, um, you can use paralyze and ring a piece and you can like, skip different packs. And then also you just have incredible uh, mobility. Um, I would honestly argue that you are the, the tank with the second best uh, mobility. Uh, just, uh, be, yeah, we'll get to the first one just in a second. But um, incredible with your rolls and you can uh, change into pedos and your um, movement speed that you can give to yourself or to your party. So you also kind of have like this support thing going on. Uh, as well as also just a party buff that makes everyone deal a little bit more physical damage. So if you are playing a monk, maybe be interested in picking up some warriors or some rogues with you just to pump out some more physical damage. Honestly, I think the monk is a really, really fun tank. And I think if you give it time and you're playing a little bit aggressive, it can be a really, really rewarding tank. Now, the reason that the, the big like downside I have on a monk is actually not really anything to do with, with the brew itself fundamentally. It's actually more to do with the talent that it has right now. Uh, Monk is just in general is kind of desperately in need of like a... I wouldn't say a rework because I actually really like where the um, where the Monk is or like the, again the fundamentals behind especially Brewmaster. Um, but it's it has such an overflow of abilities and just like damage wise abilities so it's not even you know defensively you 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 you, you have it, it, well you do have that as well like dampen harm and dampen magic and stuff like that but also again kind of requires you to know the difference between magical damage and physical damage to like really use that right but my point is just that you know you have a complete overflow of abilities which is absolutely overwhelming of like what you should use when and it also just becomes honestly in my opinion kind of clunky to play right like you really have to push up really really high until like before you can actually manage to use all your offensive abilities in a single pool sometimes you get them all like the pool pack will die before you get all of them off and then you have like some getting like weird interaction with their cooldowns you know you get one one cooldown off like 30 seconds before the other one but you kind of want to use them at the same time because it, it, it's kind of messy and um, if you can get behind that or if you can like you know um, accept that for what it is the brewmaster is a really really fun and really great tank but it is in the need of a rework which I think is most likely gonna come with the next expansion now with the Monk out of the way, I want to talk about probably the biggest beginner ta tank there is, which is of course the Guardian Druid or just the Bear. Now the Bear is a tank that just like the Warrior is just baseline extremely tanky. You have a huge health pool, uh, also great armor with Iron Fur, which is really easy just to like, you know, have an uptime on. 
it's it it does a lot of like uh, healing, you know, um, through both its mastery and also just its um, friendship regeneration that you have up. And the, the bear is all around just yeah, it's 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 honestly also rotationally wise, it's a really quite simple tank. Or it works around it, it, it's it's cooldowns. You pull around those cooldowns, so you know you when you have cooldowns, you go really really big, and when you don't, you kind of like slow a little bit down. That's still true. Even though now you have in like built-in uh, cooldown reduction uh, for your incarnation, which means that you just have your cooldowns after, which is just great. That's that's wonderful. Um, there's not really much to say about the Guardian Druid. Uh, it's it's if you're really really new to tanking and you're not really sure what you're doing at all, I would and you don't really care which tank it is. You just want to go in and see what this is about. Guardian Druid is a great choice. It kind of like it, it, it's kind of difficult to screw up on it or like you have really cr great crucial uh, arrows and even if you do it's not as punishing as for example the paladin or the um, the death knight that will just you know one shot you you will most likely be fine here same way also with the utility you do actually have some pretty good utility you know with typhoon where you can push things away you know you have vortex again it helps you with kiting Stampeding War increases movement speed for your whole party. You have a party buff that gives you Verse, which is incredible for both tankiness and just also damage. It's one of the best party buffs you can actually have. Yeah, all around I think the, the bear is is, is 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 fine, it's good. The reason why I'm a little bit hesitant is simply just because most people are a little bit bored of the bear, it, it because of the simplicity of it. If you're not, that's great, wonderful. Uh, I also have had fun with Bear, that's not like, don't get me wrong. But it is definitely one of the more simplistic tanks out there, especially rotationally wise. It, it has gone a lot better than it was before, where you just spam fresh. At least now you actually do have a little bit of cooldown, so you can't just spam it. But yeah, overall the Bear is a really, really great beginner tank, maybe even the best uh, if you are into it and you, you find it, you know, fun. Also you have all the shape-shifting forms, right? Like that's what, you know, the whole key of like mastering Druid is about. It's just not only mastering your own Druid, uh, you mean uh, the Bear form, but also getting to into, um, go in between the other Druid forms and like hop into Cat form. You can damn it sometimes, so you can use it movement speed. There's a lot of things to learn about the Druid, but the bear itself, the specialization, is on the simpler side. If you enjoy that, the bear is definitely for you. And then we just have the last tank. Vengeance Demon Hunter, my main, my beloved. <laughs> I think the Vengeance Demon Hunter right now, meta-wise, it's really doing incredibly well, mostly because of its utility. But the thing about the def uh, I mean, sorry, the, uh, the Demon Hunter is that before the rework, the fundamental idea behind the Demon Hunter was basically just that it could do what every other tank could do, but just not as well. It had a lot of like, you know, um, lifesteal and healing back, but not as great as the Death Knight. It had some good, you know, parry chance and like, you know, uh, active mitigation, but not as great as the Warriors. And it just had some, you know, great utility, but maybe not as great as some of the other tanks. So it kind of was the jack of all trades, but masters of none. That kind of did slightly change with the rework because we did get introduced a new um, build, which is basically works around the, the sigils, kind of made the, the, the Demon Hunter kind of unique in the fact that like now it's all about popping down these sigils, both with your damage sigils, but also your utility ones with the AoE silence, which is incredible. Your AoE fear, you also have uh, a sigil that can uh, chain every mob into one singular little space, which actually increases damage, right? Because if, if things are more gathered, people, you know, can cleave easier and that's... So yeah, that, that's great. With the monk, I did mention that it was the second on the mobility list. Uh, and I think, honestly, the Vengeance Demon Hunter is the most mobile tank there is. You have your Infernal Strikes, which you just like fly ac <laughs> across the screen, I was about to say, as well as your Vengeful Retreat, your Backflip. And also just, you know, jumping and gliding actually, you know, is faster than just running, meaning that you will get most likely ahead of your party, which is great because the faster the tank is, the faster you can pull, the faster you can get through dungeon, and the faster you will time it. So all that links really well, so what's up with the Demon Hunter if everything is so great? Well, I'm sure when you are looking at the character select screen and you looking at the Demon Hunter, you're probably wowed in and thinking, oh my god, I really want to play that. And 
as I mentioned before, you can absolutely do that if that's what you want. I definitely recommend just playing what you want to play. Nothing is so complicated that you can't learn it. But with that said, again, this is what we're talking about with the difficulty with the tanks. How punishing are they? And I think the Demon Hunter is quite punishing if you do not get everything correctly. The thing about the Demon Hunter is, and I've mentioned this before in my previous videos talking about it, um, the Demon Hunter has really great defensive utilities, uh, abilities as well, but you don't have them all the time like other tanks. Like a Warrior will have almost 100% uptime on Ignore Pain as well as Shield Block. The Demon Hunter not so much. You need to actually pick and choose when are you gonna be vulnerable because you are really really vulnerable when you are outside of your cooldowns and your metamorphosis which is kind of like your bread and butter. That means that if you do actually do a calculation mistake and you hop into a pool and you actually just you have seven seconds until your next defensive ability because that's also another thing I forgot to mention you have frailty which is kind of the whole snowball thing. So the more damage you do, the more time you use your orbs to um, your own spirit bomb or like you know your soul cleave and whatever, you will put frailty on the mobs, which will by stacking you know effect increase decrease the amount of damage they do do to you. So you can see that when you kind of jump in, you're really really vulnerable. But the longer you can survive, the more you can build up the frailty, the more defensive you will get. That means that you need to make sure that, you know, those seconds that it takes for you to kind of like roll the snowball, you need to survive. If you do not have the cooldowns for that, you will just absolutely get smacked. That's the thing. The Demon Hunter is a really, really fun tank. It's really fast and, 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 and really great tank if you can calculate around your cooldowns and it's something you will learn. So that's also again, I want to emphasize that if you really are hooked to the Demon Hunter, I don't want to talk you out of it. It's just, you need to be mindful of you need to be aware of when and how to use your cooldowns because else you will get punished really hard. So yeah, that's kind of like just an overall view of the different tanks and the, like the kind of like the fundamentals behind them, what you can like expect out of them as well as like, you know, where on the difficulty range they are. Just to like sum it up here, I definitely recommend the warrior and the Guardian Druid, and if you are up for it, a Paladin as well as beginner tanks, a Paladin is really great because that will force you to learn about cooldowns. And then, um, you of course, you have the um, the Death Knight, which I would rank a little bit higher simply just because of like, it's kind of on the medium spectrum. Uh, maybe, maybe, no, no actually, yeah, I, I'm gonna take the, the Death Knight with the Monk and the Demon Hunter. It's kind of more the more, uh, I don't know if the difficult is, is the right word, but more the riskier tanks to play or just the more punishing tanks if you actually do end up making mistakes. But again, that can be great because it's been talked about in the last video, making mistakes, that's how you learn, man. That's how you learn how to tank. So yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and take care everyone and I'll see you in the, the new year.